dialogic reading is actually a technique where we have a dialogue or a back and forth conversation, shared experience, if you will, about a book. And the idea is to connect the content of the book with your child's vocabulary as well as their everyday experiences in their lives. And really what you want is for your child to become the storyteller and you as the adult to be the listener. First of all, it helps to teach your child the different rules for reading and writing. In this book that I've been reading with my son, it helps him to understand that the words flow from top to bottom and left to right on the page. It also increases vocabulary and recognition of words, which we know is really critical to our children's language nutrition that they need for later reading comprehension. And finally, it really helps develop their interest in books and their motivation to listen to stories, which we know ultimately will help them become a lifelong learner. So books that have clear pictures, a simple story, are not too long, but that also have good action and vocabulary, things that are of that your child might have experienced like bedtime or also things that your child might be really interested in like if you ever want to bring an alligator to school don't you also might want to consider having books that might open up conversations about some of the challenges that we're going through in this pandemic. So books like Wimberly Worried about a young little mouse that has many different worries might be of interest and help open up some conversations that have been perhaps challenging to start with your child during this pandemic. Ultimately, the technique is most effective when it's a story that your child has read multiple times. And so the idea isn't just to read the book once, but to read it over multiple occasions. So even if you are starting out with a new book, you can use these techniques that I'll share with you during the first reading and also the last reading, but you'll see that over time, your child will really start to become more of the storyteller and that's what you want. There are really five steps to dialogic reading. Even before this first step, it's all about selecting a book that'll be of interest to your child. So I'm gonna use today the Five Little Monkeys, again, that I've been reading with my son. And he's really into monkeys and zoos right now. He often chooses this book during story time, and I would encourage you to let your child choose a book that is of interest to them as well. Once you've selected the book, then you will first prompt your child. And there's actually five different ways that you can prompt your child to encourage these awesome language and literacy skills. The first is a, an open-ended prompt. So an open-ended prompt is really just to ask your child to tell you about the pictures or things that they see on the page of the book. So I might say to my son, tell me what you see on the cover of the book. Mommy, I see five monkeys. That looks like they're reading. The next prompt is called a WH prompt. These are who, what, when, where, how, and why questions. So who do you see on the cover? What are they holding? What are they wearing? How many monkeys do you see? A completion prompt, which is our third type of prompt, is when you have your child finish a word or phrase in the story. And that's actually one of the reasons I also chose this book for this demonstration today, because if you know the Five Little Monkeys series, there is often a very common phrase that happens um, because these monkeys don't always listen the first time. And so in this book, the mom is trying to get her monkeys to and not be reading in bed because it's time to turn out the lights and go to sleep. And so she, there's a common phrase that she says, lights out, sweet dreams, no more reading in bed. And so to do a completion prompt, what you would do is you would start the phrase off and then have your child finish the phrase. So I might say, lights out, sweet dreams, no more reading in bed. The fourth type of prompt is called a recall prompt. And this is when you ask your child details about what happens in the story. So after 
Mama said, lights out, sweet dreams. No more reading in bed. Did the monkeys listen? Did they turn off the lights? You can also ask prompts that are more distancing or a prediction prompt. So if we are reading this page for the first time, we say, lights out, sweet dreams, no more reading in bed. And then we say, do you think the monkeys are gonna listen this time? Another way that you can use a distancing or a prediction prompt is to connect what's happening in the story, we call this distancing, to your child's life. So has there ever been a time that um, I said, lights out, sweet dreams, no more reading in bed? Or have you ever read this on this page, there's a book about a ghost. Um, you know, when do we see ghosts? Or what time of year do we talk more about ghosts? Halloween. And what were you for Halloween this year? The types of questions that you ask will vary based on your child's developmental age. So for younger children, you'll focus more on your open-ended, your completion, and your WH prompts. For your older children, you can really integrate those recall and distancing and prediction prompts, which will really help to facilitate their later reading comprehension. So once you've prompted your child, the second step of dialogic reading is to reflect and evaluate what your child has said. So you want to think if the answer to your prompt is correct, and you also want to think if there's any information you can add, and you can help your child as needed with this. So for example, I've been working with my son on counting and one-to-one -one correspondence, another key school readiness skill, and so I might do a how prompt here, or that WH prompt, and ask him how many monkeys do you see on the page? And maybe he responds with something like four, and I would say, that's not quite correct. Let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five. How many monkeys do you see on the page? Five. Next thing you wanna do, so step three, of dialogic reading is expand on what your child says. So if, for example, I asked my son what this is called, what is this called? And he said, it's a flashlight. I say, that's right, it is a flashlight. So I'm reflecting and evaluating, so I'm telling him that's the correct response, but now I'm gonna expand on that and say, it's a red flashlight because I'm also working with him on colors and trying to identify the colors correctly. Again, a key school readiness skills for our young readers. The fourth step to dialogic reading is to then repeat. So then you'd wanna have your child repeat back the expanded or the correct response. So when I was counting up the monkeys for how many monkeys do you see on the page and then we count them together, my son says, or we say together, five. Then I would say, how many monkeys do we see on the page? Five. That's right, you got it. And the last step of dialogic reading is enjoy. So you wanna praise and encourage your child. You really, again, wanna follow their interest. Balance your prompting. You know, sometimes your children may just want to listen to the book, and that's okay too. You just want to sprinkle in a few of these questions, but keep it fun and enjoy the nurturing time that you have together. There are a few additional things that I like to recommend with this strategy for parents and caregivers. The first is a response to a question that I often get, which is how old does my child have to be in order to use these kinds of questions while reading the book? And really the answer is from the time that they're a baby, an infant, and on, even into those teenage years. And you know, of course, your infant won't be able to respond to the prompts but the idea is that over time and as the years go on and as they, you repeat the book many times, that they will be able to become the storyteller of their own book. You will probably be answering a lot of your own questions at the start, but that still 
wonderful and it's giving them that language nutrition that they need. Additionally, when you're reading the book for the very first time, I do recommend that as you're going over the words in the book, that you run your finger along the book so that your child can start to understand, again, the rules of reading and writing, that words move from top to bottom and left to right. And as your child gets older, this is also a way for them to build fluency and they can even pick out and potentially read specific words that are within their skill level based on their reading abilities. You should be expecting more sharing from your child each time that you engage with dialogic reading with the same book. And really the even uh, wonderful thing about this is not so much about reading the story, reading the words on the page, but that you can do this in any language. You can, if, even if the book is in English, you could have a conversation with the book and simply a picture walk with your child in Spanish or in Russian or in Creole. Uh, the idea is really just to build their vocabulary and their language and the more and more that you can facilitate that with whatever your home language is, the better. So now you know the steps for dialogic reading, and guess what? You can utilize these in all your everyday interactions with your children. We call this idea everywhere learning because really learning can happen everywhere and in all our activities that we do with our children. It's about taking those everyday activities and incorporating those questions, just prickling them in so that your children can work on their vocabulary, their language, that back and forth communication, which actually also helps them to develop their social emotional skills, which are all key pieces of promoting your child's school readiness. So by incorporating Incorporating these kinds of questions into those activities, those everyday routines with your children, you're actually promoting increased school readiness across the board.